So we all know Magic Johnson from basketball, from a lot of those, those accolades, the years, arguably, but I will say probably the best point guard of all time, right? All those championships, all the influence, all the other players he influenced, but also on the other side of that, is that we also have somebody who is the unbelievable entrepreneur, right? The unbelievable investor, the philanthropist. And, and in addition to that, somebody who's just an all around incredibly nice, generous guy who continues to reinvest into community after community like ours. Sounds pretty exciting, right? So that person, that author, that entrepreneur, that person is also here today and for the first time at Traffic and Conversion Summit. So can you do me one last favor, last session of TNC to before we get out of here, can you get on your feet? Can we stand up? Can we get really excited to welcome to the stage for Business Lunch Live, Roland Frazier and Magic Johnson. Here you go. Right there. Oh. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll start on this side. I'll start on this side. All right, there we go. That is awesome. <laughs> hey, man, how you doing? Bro, I'm doing good. How's everybody out there? Yeah. <laughs> good, good. Thank you so much for, uh, for making your schedule work to come and hang out with us. Well, I know my friend Snoop was supposed to be here, and uh, I said, hey, he couldn't make it. He was sick, so they said, Magic, can you fill in? Roland called. I said, okay, I'll fill in for Snoop. I can't rap like him, but uh, I can do some of the other things. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. I like it. Um, I got a question for you. Um, I, I, how did you or when did you know that there was life after basketball? Because you like did everything basketball. And now you've almost, I don't know, eclipsed isn't the right word, but I mean, certainly matched in the entrepreneurial world. Were you kind of like, when did you see that basketball was, uh, was gonna, gonna lead to all this other stuff? Well, Roland, I think that for me, I wanted to do two things, right, uh -huh. growing up. I wanted to play in the NBA, and I wanted to be a businessman. So the best thing that happened to me, I was smart enough to befriend the owner of the Lakers, Dr. Jerry Buss, and I asked him to be my first mentor. Mm -hmm. And why I'm here on this stage today is because I got a lot of mentors, but he, he was the first one. He let me look at the Laker books on how the Lakers made uh, money from the season ticket holders to the sponsorships to um, radio, TV deals. Um, and I think about that life lesson, that business lesson that he gave me really helped me to start my own business. And so, uh, so mentors were the key to my success. But I knew from an early age I wanted to be in business. And one thing that really got me started early into business, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, probably the greatest center that's ever played in the NBA, his agent, uh, th yeah, thanks. <laughs> his agent uh, took all his money. All right. So... When that happened, I said, I don't never want that to happen to me. And then this happened. So when that happened to Kareem, I went to Dr. Buss, and he sent me to a guy named Michael Ovitz. Mm -hmm. At that time, Michael Ovitz started CAA, yeah. uh, was the biggest agent in the world. And I wanted him to represent me. And he had all the actors, directors, producers, writers, but he didn't have an athlete. So... Roland, I got to his office. I'm an early guy, so the, the meeting was at 2 o'clock. I got there at 1, and uh, he made me wait till about 4, 4.30, right? <laughs> and finally, I went into his office. He said, why should I represent you? Most athletes spend more money than they make. 
um, they're not serious about becoming a businessman. He kicked me out of his office. Now, did you think he was going to be like, man, I'm so excited to exactly. have you. It's like, you know, privilege. <laughs> exactly. Magic Johnson did not matter to Michael Ovitz. <laughs> I went in 6'9", I came out, your height. <laughs> <laughs> so three weeks later, he called me back and said, I heard, I did my research and I heard you're serious about becoming a businessman. This is what I want you to do. You read these 10 papers, Wall Street Journal, New York Times, on and on and on. And I'm a, when you come back, I'm going to quiz you. If you pass the test, I'm going to represent you. I passed the test. He represented me. And this is what he told me. Do you think you're the best basketball player? I said, yes. Then you got to hire the best lawyer, the best money manager, business manager, accountant, on and on. Always run with the best people. I went home the next day and fired everybody. Really? Yeah, because I didn't have the right team in place to take me where I wanted to go. Huh. Now, all of you got to make those same choices. Do you have the right team in place to take you where you want to go? And so for me, uh, I got the right team in place. That's why I'm I, where I am today. That's awesome. See, you, you mentioned. Thank you. Thank you. You mentioned uh, mentors. How do you go? Because there's so many people that aren't qualified that are saying they are and it's hard to kind of move through. How do you, how do you pick a mentor that you think is actually going to help a lot? I think, Roland, you just said it. You know, first, are they qualified to be one? Right. And then will they tell you the truth? And I wanted everybody who was going to be honest with me because I really wanted to learn business. I knew the pick and roll. I knew the jump shot. I, I knew the no-look pass. That's easy. That comes easy to me, basketball. But I had to first take self-evaluation of myself and say, I don't know business. So please let me get some mentors to teach me business. Uh, Peter Gruber, who was um, one of the Golden State o uh, Warriors owners, Mandalay Entertainment right now, also one of the Dodger owners, he became a mentor of mine. He was running Sony at that time. Mm -hmm. And I built Magic Johnson Theaters in the inner cities. And he was running Sony, so we did the deal, and I asked him to also mentor me. Now we own six companies together, That's you know, awesome. and so it's amazing that mentors can also become your business partners. So just get people who are going somewhere, you're trying to go somewhere, and that they're going to be honest with you and uh, help you along your journey and walk in life, in business and outside of business. So you did, you started like, a lot of the early investing that you did was urban where right. franchises were afraid to go and you right. kind of you did some really cool things including negotiating with the gangs to to hang out at your theaters and not not kill each other that's right uh, are you still doing that because i know you took that up to like the scales of billions and billions mm -hmm. are you still doing that yeah we're still doing some of it yes uh not as much anymore uh but we're still doing urban uh redevelopment urban investing uh, I've invested in a lot of urban companies, uh, but now my portfolio is is huge. When you think about the Dodgers, yay, we won the World Series last season, <laughs> yeah. And um, you think about all the sports teams. When you think about the valuations of sports teams now, it's amazing, right? Think about what Jerry Jones paid for the Dallas Cowboys, and now it's worth $5 billion and he only – paid like $175 million for the team, right? And uh, the same thing for our Dodgers. What we paid for them, $2 billion. Now Forbes just said we're worth $4 billion and growing. So, so I'm into that, the uh, WNBA, the Sparks, uh, MLS. Esports? Esports. We got Team Liquid. Yeah, nice. we got Actually, we're the best team in, in esports right now. Ooh, nice. And uh, so it's really great. And so those are the things that I'm investing in, and they got high returns. Um, and when you think about sports teams, they got multiple revenue streams. That's very important to me. And um, so I I'm excited about my company and also to diversify, you know, in different sectors. And that's any, great, too. Any, like, crypto, NFT, that kind yeah, of stuff? Yeah, NFT, yeah. We, we're entering into that space. Matter of fact, I got four contracts on my desk right now. Just got to pick one. Yeah. And, uh, but we're vetted. We've been vetting all the companies and trying to decide the best way to go. And so, yes. 
how, how do you evaluate new opportunities when you're looking at, at things like that? Well, Roland got a, a team of people who first vet not only the deal, but who brought the deal, who are going to be involved, like the principals. Um, so we want to vet them, vet the deal, look at five years running, what the uh, revenues were and are, and then what we project what they could be, right? Mm -hmm. And how can I add value to those deals? So that's what I look at. And if I like the people, because I'm too old now to not be, to be married to somebody I don't like, you know. <laughs> and the same with a lot of entrepreneurs, right? Because that's a big part of it. When you partners, you're gonna be married to each other for right. at least five, seven, eight years, you know. And so, um, so that's important to me. And then, who's managing the company? That's very important. That's what I look at when I buy companies. I look at the management team as well. And so. Not only the P&Ls, but you got to look at who's managing the company. And have they done a great job? So if not, then you got to get rid of them, bring in a whole new management team, and hopefully, you know, those revenues will go up and uh, you get the sustain sustainability and the growth that you're looking for. When, when you're looking to do something, are you long-term Buffett-like or saying, well, this will be good for a while and then I'd like to exit? Because I know you've had lots of mm. acquisitions and lots of exits. How, what, what's your philosophy when you're kind of going into something? I'm an exit man. All right. I like it. <laughs> I respect I'm a, that. I'm, I like that three to five year plan. Yeah. Nice. I don't fall in love with nothing. Do you <laughs> <laughs> I want to build it, grow it, and sell it. And say good luck to the next people, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how I look at it. Now, there are some long-term plays, you know, I mean, the Dodgers are a long-term play, yeah. right? And so um, my uh, financial services business, even though three people uh, wanted to buy us already, uh, we've owned the business for about almost four years now. When I bought, we were at $14 billion, uh, Equitrust, and now we're at $23 billion this year. And so uh, we've been growing it by a billion every year, doing a great job. It'll and pick so, up. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's hope so anyway. <laughs> That's great. When, um, and do you do a lot of work with partners, right? Yeah, because I like partners. Yeah. Because we both bring our expertise to the table, and we can come together and uh, we'll spell out the roles. Hey, you do these things. I do these things. And then let's go make it happen. So... I, I like it. I, I started my business in partnerships, so I enjoy them. When, when you're looking at doing something like a deal with somebody um, and maybe a friend is involved, have you worked with friends and family in the business? Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I pay my friends and family to stay away. <laughs> I'll give I, you some I, think, I think my son, you know, I work with my, my son, yep. of course, but um, listen, it's... it's it's still about an expertise. It's about what are you bringing to the table, mm -hmm. right? And we have to look at that because what we found out, if you think about small business owners, most times family and friends are the ones who, who cause you to fail, right? Because, you know, they're not showing up on time or they, you know, not doing their, uh, pulling their weight, not doing their job. And so uh, I like the fact that you got both of your sons working uh, with you and for you and same thing with me you know you want to work with your family but there you have to spell out roles for them and yeah. they must deliver yeah I, matter of fact I'm gonna take that back they must over deliver there's not enough in the marketplace today for all of us out here just to deliver anymore we got to over deliver especially if you think about your clients your customers because the marketplace is saturated now, right? And so you got to make sure you over deliver so you can get the retention that you're looking for. The reason my business has been successful is because we over delivered in the inner cities mm -hmm. to our customers. I have the number one brand in urban America. So they're loyal to my brand. They trust my brand. And that's what it's all about because we over delivered to them. You said um, that very often you find opportunities in problems. Uh, <laughs> tell us a little bit about that. Well, I think that, you know, just like now, people look at, because during this COVID time, 
Um, I'm aggressive during COVID. I, I, I'm looking for companies to buy. Yeah. And, and so when I think about problems, that's what I'm talking about. Or companies that's had problems uh, driving revenue or, you know, being successful. I can look at that company and with my brand and the ability to say, hey, I know we can make that business profitable. Mm -hmm. So let's buy in low <laughs> and, then exit. and then, you know, drive the, the revenue up and then exit at a high number. And we've done that a number of times. And so um, that's what I'm talking about when I, I talk about problems. That's great. And you also said it's good to find the future. What, what does that mean? Well, I, so right now I'm into infrastructure, right? So Right now, they figure that's a $20 trillion opportunity in the next 10 to 15 years. Why? Because all our infrastructure is old here in America yep. and around the world, basically. Uh, when I came in from the airport, the street I was supposed to come down, a water main had bust. Mm -hmm. Why? Because them pipes are old. You go in L.A., pipes are old. You see it happening all the time. The rail system, airports colleges, on and on and on. It's, it's just old. So I looked at it and said, I got to jump in early. So I started my company before all this happened. Mm -hmm. And we're getting deals all across America right now. So when I think about opportunity, I think you got to be ahead of it, right? Mm -hmm. And so I've been ahead of this infrastructure opportunity. And we, we did LaGuardia Airport, the Denver Airport. I, I can't mention another one we won, but on and on and Which on. Which was it you can't mention? Uh, this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the quiet period. But I'm, I'm, I'm aggressive during this time, and I, and, and I like that there's a lot of great deals. What's interesting is a lot of capital out there is just finding the right deals. So speaking of capital, I know you said that when you first were trying to get your businesses going, you were going to use other people's money. You went to multiple banks, and it was, we love you, and we need to have you come back and sign this one thing, and you do it, and then crickets or... Uh, yeah, it didn't work out. And then you went a whole different route. Would you kind of share your evolution? Because I know there's a lot of people here that would love to take advantage of opportunities, but they don't have the capital to do it. Would you kind of share that? Because you got a great story. Well, I'd like to get up too. You I know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a <laughs> talk, walk person. So <clears throat> you would think that being Magic Johnson that people say, oh, here's a lot of money. And that wasn't the case. Matter of fact, Magic Johnson worked against me. And they said, oh, we want your picture and your autograph, but we don't want to give you the money. And so I got turned down seven or eight times from banks uh, about getting capital because I wanted growth and sustainability. And the only way I could do that is to use other people's money. And so I had a track record of success, too, when I think about all the things I was doing, we made money, but still people were not ready to invest in urban America, in the inner cities of America. Just look at this. African Americans got a $1.5 trillion spending power. Latinos got another $1.5 trillion spending power. That's $3 trillion of disposable income. And that's why I invested in urban America, mm -hmm. is the spending power that nobody was going after. Mm -hmm. But in order for my business to take off, when I landed the Starbucks deal, and that deal, uh, everybody thought no way that I could get Starbucks to come into urban America, where well, I did. Howard Schultz and I did a deal, and, um, but I needed capital to build the 125 Starbucks. And those eight, nine banks turned me down. So finally, I went up to Seattle, I mean, I'm sorry, to Sacramento to the pension funds. They turned me down three years in a row. But finally, the fourth year, Cal Purr said, okay, I believe in you, so I'm gonna give you $50 million. And if you're successful with the 50, you can come back and get 100 more million, right? And so I invested in a shopping center in the inner cities, bought it for $22 million, 40% occupied, took it up to 100% occupied, 
resold the center for $48 million, took the $26 million profit up to Sacramento, and they said, oh, I guess you do no business. <laughs> so that's what got me started. And <clears throat> then I was able to get access to capital. But this has been, I, I busted through doors and walls for a lot of minorities, even sitting in this audience today, where we couldn't get capital and still sometimes still can't because of the color of our skin, unfortunately. But we just want an equal opportunity. And then once we get that, we got to over deliver. And we got to make sure we make our business become successful so we can not only have more access to capital, but also another one can walk in the door behind you. And that's very, very important, okay? So I want to tell you the Starbucks story real quick. Is that okay, Roland? Yes, sir. And I know we're supposed to get off in a minute. How much we got? We still got time? That's your countdown, yeah. Okay, cool. So uh, Roland gave me, let's, let's give it up for Roland, because him and this... <laughs> I've been in business for over 30 years, and I quite haven't read a bio quite like Roland's. <laughs> this dude, man, the success that he's had, and he gets to share that with all of you. I hope you guys been taking notes, because it's important. This brother has been amazing, and uh, I like his partners too. And so, so this is what happened. I go up to Seattle, knock on Howard Schultz's door, chairman CEO of Starbucks, and I said, look, minorities, we like coffee too. <laughs> we want some of that good coffee. But we have to drive 45 to a half hour to an hour outside our community to get some coffee, Starbucks. So I said, if you build them in our community, they're going to be very, very successful. Can I interrupt for just a yes. half a second? Mm -hmm. You found that out by actually getting out and asking people at Starbucks, right? That's Cause, right. Because that's you. You were close to the customer. Yes. You had first-party data. That's just so smart. Yes, I, I, I also got out in the community, asked them what did they want, and everybody I talked to wanted a Starbucks to come into the mm -hmm. inner cities, and so. We did the deal. He came down, this, this is the funny part. He came down to see my movie theaters and see how I managed my theaters. That was going to be uh, if he's gonna decide to do the deal or not. And thank God, Whitney Houston's first movie was coming out, <laughs> Waiting to Exhale. So I had 5,000 black women wrapped around the corner <laughs> to come see this movie, Friday night. <laughs> so he walks up and he said, man, what's going on here, you know? And I said, waiting to exhale is coming out. So all, every theater is sold out. And he came in, see, he had to see how we managed the theater, see how we got the people in and out of the concession stand into the theater. We, we did it at an amazing rate. And then we went in to see the movie. The movie pops up about 20 minutes in. See, we go to movies different than everybody else. So we start talking to the screen. Girl, why are you still with him? <laughs> you should dump him. And Howard elbowed me and said, come on out into the lobby. So we went out to the lobby. He said, Magic, I haven't had a movie-going experience quite like this. Guess what? That got me the deal. Now, I told you this story because of this. Sometimes you got to take people to the deal. See, he had to come to urban America to see the rooftops, to see how people went to the movies, because what he saw was people, if they spent $14, $10 to go to the movies, they're going to spend the money necessary to go to Starbucks. So it worked out great. We uh, built 125 And the great thing is the headline rolling in the LA Times said, no way minorities are paid $3 for a cup of coffee. <laughs> Thomas, we'll pay $3 for a cup of coffee. We quite don't know what scones are, though. <laughs> so I had to take the scones out of my Starbucks, put in sweet potato pie, peach cobbler, <laughs> things that resonate with the urban consumer. Now, get this. They said it would never work, right? My per caps were higher than his per caps, per customer. Yes. That's what made us successful. Stand up, Thomas. 
Go ahead. Do the selfies. Turn around. Turn around first. <laughs> All right. Hold on one second. What's your favorite music group? My favorite music group? Yes. Oh, shoot. Favorite music group? Oh, man. Come on, just oh. one. <sighs> I hate myself. Uh, Sophie Tucker. Who? Sophie Tucker. Sophie Tucker. So he likes Sophie Tucker. Now, they play music in, in, in the Starbucks. So I had to take Sophie Tucker out of my Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Jackson, Prince, Beyonce, Jay-Z, Snoop. Now, why did I say that? Because that's my customer base. Why did I say that? Because that makes me over-deliver to my customer base. Now, you all are entrepreneurs. Do you know your customer? And then will you, in return, over-deliver to them? So guess what happened? Because of that, they all became my brand ambassadors. They went out and sold my business for me. Right? So that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about over-deliver. All right, let's give him a hand. <laughs> Listen, I know um, Magic was kind enough to fly in. He actually came in. He has to be in Seattle in about two and a half hours. It's a two and a half hour flight. That's how cool you are for coming in. Well, Let's give him you. a huge hand. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Good luck. Good luck to everybody. Hold, hold the music. Hold the music. Hold the music. Hold the music. All right. Nothing in your hands. Let's go. Everything out your hands. No phone in your hand, nothing. Put it in your pocket or in your seat. Real quick. All right. When you go home, did you learn a lot? And if you learned a lot since you've been here these last two days, clap two times. All right. Oh, no, no. It wasn't that good. <laughs> that means you didn't learn a lot. All right. We're going to try this again. If you learned a lot, and you're going to apply what you have learned these last couple of days when you get home. Clap two times. Okay. Oh, no, no. Two times. Not, not four times. <laughs> if you're ready to conquer the world, your business is going to be off the charts when you get home. You're going to have an amazing 2022. Clap six times. Nice, 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 nice. Okay. If rolling is amazing... This conference is amazing. Clap 10 times. <laughs> now, if you're going to end up like Roland and the Magic Man, your business going to be, let's say in two years, you're going to be like crazy. Because, see, I always set goals. I always set goals. See, you got to set goals and then try to accomplish your goal. Don't let anybody distract you from going after your goal. So you got to say, hey, in three years, I'm going to be here. In two years, I want to be here. That's what I do. If you're going to do that, and you love the magic man and rolling, <laughs> you know what number I wear. Number 32. You got to clap 32 times. Go! If you want a lot of additional really cool stuff, I've got a whole channel full of it and you should subscribe so that you don't miss any of it. I'm uploading videos all the time. There's a lot of things that are changing in this area and you don't want to miss out. You don't want to do it wrong and you don't want to make the mistakes I make. Subscribe so that you don't miss out and then check out this next video.